Alcatraz, The Rock. No one has ever escaped from this prison. This is Frank Morris. Armed robbery, burglary, grand larceny. Morris has escaped from many prisons. But Alcatraz could be the exception. Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars and welcome to another classic film review. Today's classic film review, I take a look at the 1979 Clint Eastwood film, Escape from Alcatraz. The film was directed by the legendary Don Siegel and it stars, of course, Clint Eastwood, Patrick McGowan, Roberts Blossom, Jack Thebo and Fred Ward. Now, the film tells the story of an escape attempt from Alcatraz in 1962 by three inmates. Clint Eastwood's character, Frank Morris, uh, Jack Thibault's character, Clarence Angelin, and Fred Ward's character, John Angelin, who were brothers, I believe. Now, these were real people that existed that um, certainly tried to um, escape from Alcatraz in 1962. Um, and there were no bodies found or anything, so it, many assume that they drowned, but they all they are considered to be still at large. So um, it is very possible that they did escape. And my understanding is that there are some pictures of certainly the brothers anyway um, on some um, tropical island somewhere that many experts have said yes, that's them sort of thing. So there is a chance they escaped. Anyway, this film focuses on these three characters and Clint Eastwood's character in particular, Frank Morris, who is transferred to Alcatraz because he is like a uh, a lifer. He's in and out of prison. He's a is a, a career criminal, um, and because he keeps constantly escaping from uh, regular prisons, he gets transferred to Alcatraz, which is thought to be inescapable no one did ever as we keep being reminded no one has ever escaped from alcatraz even though a few people had attempted it so this film follows the clint eastwood character frank morris settling into the prison system um having to fight off the usual brutes building relationships and then ultimately coming up with a plan to escape from uh the prison from alcatraz um and the plan he comes up with essentially is to kind of chip away at the grates in the cells because the salt water over the years has kind of weakened um like the 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 stone around these grates and things so to spend time cutting away and chipping away at these making a hole big enough making like plaster cast put in place so that it looks like nothing's different um and then get yourself out on top get all the equipment you need to kind of make rafts and then get yourself off the island um and this film depicts all of that so to speak you've got the usual bad guy warden played brilliantly by patrick mcgowan and um he has always played pretty good bad guys over the years i point to this and braveheart and things like that he's always been really really good now this film for me was probably one of my earliest exposures to like prison movies because i've said this many times on the channel i grew up watching clint eastwood films um big big fan of Clint Eastwood films and this was probably my first prison uh, film that I ever watched really and it's a film I think that still stands the test of time and I think it's a prison film that has been a kind of it kind of laid down the mold almost for like modern prison films that many prison films have followed you know what I mean the downtrodden criminals you know escape attempts the big brute you know bullying this that and the other and you know, the head honcho in the prison befriending the um, the hero character, uh, the bad guy warden, all this kind of stuff. You know, I'm, I'm, these are the, this is the blueprint that has been laid down. I'm not saying this was the first to do it, but this was the first one I remember doing it and doing it effectively. Um, and most prison films that followed this kind of followed a very, very similar blueprint to this. It's almost, they're almost like sports movies, you know, uh, prison movies. They could do kind of follow similar blueprints, so to speak. But it's a really very effective film. Now, you've got Don Siegel directing this, who obviously is well known for directing Clint Eastwood. I think this was their fifth collaboration and their last collaboration. I believe they had a little bit of a fallout while making this one. Something to do with the production companies or something like that, because... Clint Eastwood wanted it to be his production company and Don Siegel wanted it to be his production company. They did compromise, they did re reconcile, but they never worked together again. Um, so these are two guys that know each other really, really well. So there's a lot of trust there. And I always, I do think that Don Siegel is one of those directors that's 
always got the best out of Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, when he directs himself, you know, he doesn't really push himself as an actor, I don't think. He's, he's, even though he's done a lot of fine performances in his own films, of course he has. But I think Don Siegel is the, is the one of the few directors that have really, really got the best out of Clint Eastwood. And this is one of those roles that you're not used to seeing Clint Eastwood do. You know, the essentially is a career criminal in this film, but you still do manage to feel um, or get behind this character to some degree because he kind of he's doing all the right things. You know, he's looking after the right people. He's uh, all this kind of stuff. He's pushing back against the warden and the system, and so they do a good job of balancing it out. They don't portray him as the good guy, so to speak, but you don't necessarily learn much more about him. Um, there's some quite brutal scenes in this. The scene that always used to make me cringe when I watched it as a kid, and it still does now because I rewatched it the other night with my wife, and she was really shocked when she saw this scene, even though she's seen this film before. It's the guy where he chops his fingers off with the axe when the warden takes away his painting privileges, and that's all he's got. Um, his painting, that's what keeps him going in prison, and he takes them away. Um, and he, in response, he kind of chops his fingers off, which is it still gets you when you see that scene. So it's it's a really well made, um, effective prison film. This um, it is quite gritty. It is quite brutal at times. Um, when you compare it to some other prison films, um, it, you could argue it's also tame at the same time. But it's it's a film of its time, a late seventies film uh, with Clint Eastwood in the lead. So they're not going to kind of mess around with him and his his star power too much in a film like this but it's it's not a film that you, you see clint eastwood usually do these sort of films um you know he's used to doing much more heroic characters but i do think they they, they they balance it just well interestingly as well um a, about a year after um the escape attempt by these three um prisoners um alcatraz was shut down just over a year after the escape so went missing or tried to escape not necessarily anything to do with that i think it was more a cost thing it was it was far too expensive to keep open um there's a blink and you'll miss it debut cinema debut for danny glover um which i'd never noticed before uh, and i did notice it this time watching it and he's, he's like the first person he meets handing out magazines uh, and you do recognize him it is danny glover but he's only in it for about five or ten seconds um but yeah it's a it's a really good clint eastwood film this and it is one that does stand the test of time if you like prison movies and you've never seen this one it's worth checking out for a, a lot of different reasons it's a great clint eastwood film but also it's like i say it's based on true events as well so it does make it a little bit more interesting so yeah thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed revisiting this clint eastwood classic i will of course be back with more reviews and content on the channel very very soon